Hey there! I don't know what to say for my intro, so today I'm just gonna skip it. You saw the thumbnail, you saw the title, we all know we're talking about Alex and his channel Go Herping. He has 200,000 subscribers plus some change, and he has had his YouTube channel uh, for quite a while. Now, Alex is probably the most requested review for me to do right now. I have a feeling it's because you want to know whether or not you can really trust his advice on things. First of all, if you want advice, welcome to the internet, there's gonna be a lot of bad stuff out here. And useless things and bad advice. So always double check, preferably triple and quadruple it, and then have an idea. Are they somewhat in agreement, and if not, maybe I need another source. But let's get into uh, Alex. I believe the, this is mostly the requests are down to his ball python, and the care he gives to all his ball pythons, really. Um, especially the one that's called Sunny. I think that is the main key here, because Sunny didn't eat for about 14 months. That is a very long time for a snake also a ball python, to go without food or any form of nutrients. And uh, Alex admits that pretty much everybody agrees. A snake going without food for that long, probably is not a good idea. And, and, and just uh, so everybody knows, uh, it is eating now. First of all, full disclosure here guys, I have never owned a ball python. However, I have spent the last week pretty much just Finding as much information I can about ball pythons, their care, their needs. I am not an expert, but I know enough to determine whether or not he is way off or he's doing at least something right. Among the things I've done is uh, look into uh, Facebook groups. Yes, the horrible, horrible world of Facebook groups. Those are the places you get pounced on if you do even the slightest thing wrong. Now, as I said, ball python not eating for over a year, not a good thing. That's just, you know, agreed on that. Now, why did it stop eating? For all intents and purposes, all we can do is speculate because no one can really tell. There are some who thinks because of certain things that Alex did wrong or didn't do, that's why I didn't eat. Yet, Alex admits that he tried many things, it didn't work, so he put the snake back in the original enclosure, and after a few weeks then it ate again. Therefore, we have no idea what the factor was. There were a factor somewhere, we just don't know what it was. But the enclosure it used to be in is a bioactive vivarium. For me, I, I enjoy those. They're very uh, nice to the eye, so to speak. And they're perfect for when you want to have your animal as a display animal because it looks nice and it looks, you know, naturalistic. And some people absolutely hate that. Especially when it comes to ball pythons, apparently. People will really hate on that, which I find a bit funny, you know. I always find it funny when someone's like, you should put it in a very tiny enclosure and then put it in, you know, ah. what does it do in the wild? I mean, there is no small enclosure there. There's just, you know, here you are. Go. So in theory, any animals should be able to handle large enclosures as long as you provide them with the appropriate heights and amount of heights. But that's just a theory. Don't take my word for anything in that department. Let's uh, let's go with the Facebook groups. Uh, I'm not gonna mention none. I'm not gonna mention any names from there because Alex did do that a little bit, and they really didn't like that. So I'm not going to. They heavily disagree with pretty much 90% of what he did, and they're not very nice about it either. They, they genuinely believe they hold all the answers, at least that's the feeling you get from the comments. And then they give them a... Uh, and according to Alex was in this group by the way, they gave him a bunch of advice and then they still said he did it all wrong. None of it was right. Which I find a bit funny because if he messed it up then wouldn't that usually mean, at least where I come from, your advice was poorly structured. 
if you still mess it up, you know, that's just me. Like, like this one thing he's been criticized uh, quite heavily about is he was a bit nitpicky when it came to a veterinarian. So to find the right vet for Sunny, I ended up contacting seven new vets. I have been to three different vets in the past. I wasn't a huge fan of any of them. I do not understand the criticism there because picking any veterinarian is not necessarily a good thing. I myself would not pick any of the four or five very close by veterinarian. We're talking within five to ten minutes, I could go there. I would not pick them because they're specializing in dogs, cats, horses, and you know, farm animals. They are not specialized in reptiles. For that, I would drive an hour and a half to get to someone who specialized in reptiles. There's very few of them where I live, so I'd go to that person. That seems the right, like the right choice. So I perfectly understand his position of having to choose the right one. Now people then flip that and said he did that to just be proven right. I'm in the position saying I can see both sides and I'm therefore going to claim I do not presume that that's what he did. Because I can't argue why he did it. I can just see from my perspective. I know that is what I would do, but I don't know if that is the same reason. So I'm going to let that stand as he is most likely go doing the right thing according to what I know. According to them, he can do nothing right. At least that's what it seems. Now, when it comes to this group's criticism of Alex, I have some constructive criticism. Because the admins and moderators seem to be on this very high horse. And I uh, completely understand why you want to be on that high horse. It's a very nice horse to sit on. But when you get on it, you have to follow the rules that made you get on it not just say it to others and then expect them to follow it and you are not following it. Because in the end, they kick out Alex from the group and they block him. Because he was being condescending. Now I have been reading a lot of these comments and again, I can't show them because they lose their mind apparently. He was being condescending towards the end. Obviously he was feeling attacked. You should expect that. I don't expect most of the people that I make a video about being too nice to me. But they were being condescending towards him massively and some called him names. And used phrasings that definitely did not help on a dialogue here. It was your classical welcome to Facebook group. If you're not doing it right, we're gonna pick you apart and consider you a lesser human being. That's my issue then, because how can I take them serious when they're being hypocritical? I'm trying to understand both sides in this case, because I, I have not kept a ball python, therefore I cannot be too, you know, biased on my own knowledge. I have to listen, but it's very hard when they are not following their own rules. And then you add the layer of Alex being a YouTuber with over 200,000 subscribers, he gets a lot of inputs and he gets them constantly and he is flooded with it. He has admitted many times that the care he is suggested to do is literally anything from A to Z and in between you have everything. It's just very difficult for him to actually listen because he, he is extremely skeptical. Then it doesn't help to start using certain words. Is Alex a little bit arrogant? Sometimes. Yes, he is. And I can understand how. I call this the YouTube phenomenon. You get popular on YouTube, you get a lot of input into what you're doing, especially if it involves like crafting, building animals. And they will comment massively and come with all these suggestions. And at one point, you just start not to listen and then you do your own research. And that is the feeling I'm getting with Alex. He's reached the point, he doesn't listen, he does his own research, and I can understand why. And especially the second people start to be in any form, just slightly a hint of aggression towards him. Now, in the end, the ball python started eating again. It was back in its own enclosure. And it seems that so far everything is going fine. The ball python 
very importantly, never lost any massive weight, which was kind of interesting for me because I've seen a lot of emaciated ball pythons lately. And this never looked emaciated, so that's interesting. In conclusion for this, I can't tell you if he did everything right. It stopped eating, so something was probably wrong. Somehow it fixed itself, I guess. Or not, or the snake just decided it's time to eat. I cannot tell. I do know that Alex has quite a few ball pythons, and he only had an issue with a single one. So it might just be a fluke. You can't tell. But I can also tell that probably something that the others were saying were true, and it was useful. The way they said it was just terrible and not very effective. And I've seen many comments in that group saying that new keepers are afraid to say anything because they are not being very nice about it. And this is a group where the moderators think they're being nice, so... Now you know how I feel about Facebook groups. In the end, all I can say about this is, if you follow him for ball python care, just be sure. Get a second opinion, maybe even a third and a fourth. And then you should be pretty safe. Now from that, I figured we'd do something positive, something I like about Alex. And he has a care guide for leopard geckos, and it's one of the most comprehensive one video care guides for leopard geckos that are very good. And I should know, I keep leopard geckos, I am a, very much a gecko fan, I have many geckos. They are by far my favorite animal, and on my list, you know, of the most animals, of the animals I want lately, and most of them are geckos. So there, I would definitely, you know, recommend that. He's definitely got that down. Now, there are plenty of other channels with, you know, perfectly good care guides, and there's a certain channel out there I might do a video on that has a lot about ge leopard geckos, and um, I have nothing bad to say about that. Another good thing I like about Alex is he brings up some very important subjects, such as the fact that people has a weird way of determining expertise. Like they see a guy online, on YouTube, with a lot of subscribers, and then they immediately think, a lot of subscribers equals expert. It, it doesn't have to equal expert. I've seen people with a million subscribers treating animals like shit. It has nothing to do with that. But people have this tendency, when they have a sick animal or pet, they ask a pet YouTuber for advice and care and treatment, when what they should do is go to the veterinarian. You know, don't ask someone online, go to the vet. Figure out which vet you should use and use it. That's what they're there for. A pet YouTuber, at best, can give you a guess, and that's about it. They don't know your animal, they don't have time to expect it, and most likely, they won't even have time to respond to you. Because your messages were drowned out among 500 other messages. That's a very normal thing. So I'm very glad that he brings this up and I have an entire video discussing this very important topic, actually. Now, with a couple of positives, I think it would take a negative. Uh, he has an axolotl, and axolotls are a very interesting animal, you know. They're getting very popular lately, I know. Just a few years ago, they weren't that big. Now, you know, you go into a fish store and, you know, they will have axolotls. But here, Alex does the same mistake. He sees what he does, and it seems to be going fine. He has done his research, then he blocks out criticism and doesn't let it affect him because he has quite bright lights on it and axolotls are not used to bright lights and it can somewhat hurt their eyesight as far as I know but he just shrugs it off and says but it's fine it's going fine that is very difficult to tell because an animal will as far as it can avoid showing you it's sick so when you finally see a sick animal it is most likely gonna be serious so just shrugging it off can be dangerous but that's about it the rest of the care I have no issue with he is very on point with it, and he has full disclosure on and transparency on how he tries things. So it's only the light, and he does provide possibilities for the animal to go into shade. So it's a minor thing, it could be a problem in the long run, but it doesn't seem to be a problem at the moment. Overall, 
I enjoyed the vast majority of his content. He has very informative videos overall, they're very good. He has some very nice care guides on some animals. He does a very important thing, he points out his own mistakes and has, are showing this very good transparency so you can judge what's actually happening. He doesn't try to hide an animal dying or a bad decision when he recognizes it as a bad decision. And, as with the axolotl, he points out when he does something that people disagree with, he points that out. I enjoy that, because that way you can say, okay, now he's going to say something that a lot of people do not agree with him on, which is very important. In conclusion, I have no serious issue with him. There are some minor things for me, and then one thing I cannot make a decision on, it is the big problem, but it's very difficult to make a decision when both sides seems to be dug in and the problem somewhat resolves itself while they're dug in, then it's very difficult to tell who's right. In the end, I think he is in the better part of pet YouTube. He has his flaws, we all do, but he seems to love his animals very much and take the best care that he thinks he can provide for them. Which is basically all we all want to do. That's gonna do it for today's video. If you liked it, please leave a like, maybe even subscribe a little. Oh, and if you want to see more of my animals, you know, and all the others, go to my Instagram, I do show them there. Now, that's it, see you next time.